Welcome back to the Caps On Podcast. My name is Tyler Blumenstick, joined by Anthony Mano, Sam Meehan, and Nicholas Tobias. What's up, guys? Don't call, How are we doing? Don't call, don't call me Nicholas. You sound like my mother. Well, uh, <laughs> what does your name tag say? My name tag says Nick. Oh, all right. All right. Okay. Ooh. I stand corrected. <laughs> I hate being called Nicholas. All right, keep going. Sorry, we sorry. Do we don't do government names here. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> um, all right, yes, yeah, so we got a huge action-packed week of football. A lot of good games. Um, Packers oh, say – Listen, I think every every football game has action in it, Stick. I hate to be a bearer of bad news there, but – Action-packed. <laughs> it's not a movie. You're not just sitting there watching something. You know, you're actually – I mean, actually, we're sitting there watching I mean, you something. are – you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Nick takes in the game via photosynthesis. It's osmosis. It just Osmosis, yeah, you just you just plow information straight through. Osmos what did I say? Photosynthesis? That's what I meant. Yeah. I meant osmosis. It's like there's that, that episode of SpongeBob where the Krusty Krab has the TVs and everyone's watching and it just like drills into their eyes, and Mr. Krab sends it in reverse and it goes right back into the TV. Yeah, I got you. I got you. There you All go. right, sorry. We digress. We're good. <laughs> um, so last week we introduced the format um, with our little Return of the Caps on Sports podcast, and we're going to actually pull a switcheroo on you this week. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to go through every single game um, one by one. We're going to go mm -hmm. Thursday preview. We're going to go Sunday night preview. Um, then we got a segment called Easy Money, which is going to be the essential like locks of the week. Um, then Make the Case. Um, it's like a line that's kind of fishy um, that you might be a little skeptical about. And then uh, you're still going to bet it, though. And then um, Monday Night Football Preview, and that's how we're going to wrap it up. Uh, so let's dive right into the Thursday preview. Um, game starts at 820. It's uh, Miami Dolphins against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars. Electric game. Absolutely electric. Um, Dude, it's a ba battle of the facial hair. You got the beard in Fitzmagic, and you got the, the, the handlebars in, in Minshew. There you go. Uh, the spread is Jaguars minus three. Uh, total set at 48. Thoughts? What do you guys got? Anyone want to go first? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, can yeah, go over so, I can go over some injury stuff. So the Jaguars Let's on the it. injury report, wide receiver DJ Chark. His chest, uh, his chest injury is questionable. He was limited Monday, Tuesday, didn't practice today. Uh, Did he I get think stabbed he's... in the lung by his medical doctor no. as well? No. That was <laughs> That was unbelievable. unbelievable. No. Talk about some garbage. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, didn't practice today. I think he plays. I think he plays tomorrow. I think limited Monday and Tuesday. He didn't practice Wednesday. I think it's just a rest day. He's going to give it a go probably um, before the game. He's going to get out there. And then we got kicker Josh Lambeau with left, uh, left hip injury. He's out. So, a uh, little bit of kicker issues that they got to – dig up there on the Dolphins side of the ball we got cornerback Byron Jones out with a groin injury that's big time loss for uh for the Miami Dolphins uh they looked lost they kind of looked lost with him on the field they looked worse without with uh without him uh also on the injury report cornerback Xavier Howard knee injury he was limited Monday and Tuesday he'll probably get the go also limited was uh Devontae Parker with a hamstring injury so uh, a couple notables I mean, on the I mean, but, but still, you're talking about that Miami defense that's supposed to be improved from last year. And now they're mm -hmm. missing not they're missing their top guy mm -hmm. um, at cornerback, and their second best guy is going to be at 75, 80 percent. Right. Um, and and I, you're talk some, I think this is just going to be such a high scoring game, too, that the, he's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, I have some I have some game notes here, too. So the Jaguars last week, eight receivers had three plus possessions. Right. And that's against um, a, a pretty good uh titans defense right they lost the game but they were able to put up 30 they lost 33 to 30 right um and they still covered plus seven i think uh i think this this dolphins uh this dolphins defense is going to be picked apart uh by uh by gardner Minshew. it's a sentence i don't think i've ever dreamed i would <laughs> utter but here we are so what are you taking? Do you take a quick, some quick at the oh, end? Oh, I'm or? taking the Jaguars. I'm taking the Jaguars. I'm also, uh, yeah. I'm also all over the over in this game. Um, I think that both of these teams are going to come out firing. I don't think the Jaguars defense is really anything to write home about either, although they're healthy, healthier at least. Um, Fitzpatrick shows you he can throw the football and he can at least put points on the board. I think this is going to be a shootout, but I'm going to take the Jaguars. Yeah, I think the Jaguars are a smart play here talking about, um, a team that has surprised the league 
Uh, you know, they're, they've traded away their whole defense. Their offense is just full of people who, you know, you wouldn't expect to be carrying a football team. Mm -hmm. uh, Minshew is kind of defying expectations right now. Nobody thought he was going to be as good as he is right now. Um, you know, losing Leonard Fournette, well, I guess giving him away. Um, and, you he didn't know, want him in the first place. Yeah, but but still, you're looking at you know a top power running back in the league who you know who's really good in between the tackles um, as a corner piece for that. Whatever, uh, you know they they pulled off the upset week one against the Colts. They almost did it against the uh, uh, against the Titans last week. They're two um, against the spread though. That's that's what's important. That is actually and that is absolutely what's important. It's all it's listen. Nice. It is. It is. And you're talking about the the way this team plays. Um, they play hard for Minshew. They play hard for their head coach. Um, you look at this Dolphins team who just gave up over 400 passing yards and four touchdowns to Josh Allen. Um, I mean, Josh Allen's a great quarterback. Don't you dare sleep on Josh Allen. Hey, hey, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not saying taking a nap on Josh Allen. <laughs> I will Allen not here. be but tolerate. So. I will not tolerate any Josh Allen slander. It's funny because, but, but but still, I mean, you're just talking about a defense that kind of gets Swiss cheese by an offense yeah. that's not supposed to put up that many yards. That offense is Josh Allen's supposed to get one, maybe two touchdowns a game. They want to keep the score low with their defense, but they were able to put up with the offense. I'm going to take the Jaguars here with the points, um, and I think this is an easy one. I and, and we. I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to see the battle of the stashes. <laughs> yeah. On the topic oh, of uh, on the topic of Josh Allen, uh, thrown for 417 yards, I have a little 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 bullet point uh, for the Dolphins' defense here. It's, uh, quote, that's not good, like extra bad. <laughs> so uh, we're on the same page there. You should be letting Josh Allen throw for 417 yards. But uh, I think we'll get to Josh Allen a little bit later. Who's next? Anyone else? Probably will. Yeah, I got really nothing to add. Over in the Jags. Over in the Jags. Yeah, I'm gonna. You had everything that I was gonna say. I'm gonna go Jags <laughs> minus three. Oh, this is not a good sign. No, I mean, I would probably put this in the easy money category if I could. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, not how the show works, but I'm still gonna go Jaguars, and we'll pick some more later. All right, moving on. We're gonna go to Monday or Sunday night football, rather. Um, it's a really, really good game between the Green Bay Packers and the New Orleans Saints. It's in New Orleans. Uh, the Saints are minus three. Total set at fifty-two and a half. Initial thoughts. Who wants to start it off? Why, why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you guys go first? We were talking. Why <laughs> are the Packers underdogs? I know it's in know. the fans. Not like it's you know a hostile environment they're going into. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced that the Packers drafted Jordan Love solely to piss off Aaron Rodgers enough to turn him into a superhuman. <laughs> to light a fire under him. I got you. Yeah, just he is. I have, he hasn't looked as good in a few years. I mean, he's always looked good, but he looks incredible so far this year. And I have not really been impressed with the Saints. I mean, they they, they did beat up on the Bucks week one. I, I still I don't like the Bucks this year at all. Um, and my our Raiders pick. Raiders won outright, one by ten. Their defense looks a little shaky, and Rogers I think is just going to torch him. Um. 52 and a half is a bit high for the over, but I'm I'm taking Packers money line. I got like plus 142 on FanDuel earlier today, so I'm taking yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's plus got three. good value. I'm with you there too. I don't know. I'm with you, Sam. I don't know why the Saints are favored in this game. I think I think when you look at the 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 resume that uh, Drew Brees has, right, last year, um, year before that. I, I think they're kind of anticipating a bounce back game, like second week without Michael Thomas. Let's, you know, let's build on what worked last week against the Raiders, even though they lost the game. I think, I think they're banking on a, um, they're banking on a bounce back game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, I'm taking Saints minus three. Uh, I don't. I, I'm hey, not, sir, hold before. I just want to, because I, I, all I want to add is one thing about this game. I'm going to uh -huh. take Saints minus three, and that's I, I feel good with that. Um, the Saints are 13 and 12 against their spread uh, in the last 15 games for week three and four. Um, you know they're notorious for not being. They're, they're three and 15 when it comes to week one and two, and then they go to 13 and two for week three and four. Um, they're home. Green Bay might be missing Devontae Adams. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'll feel calm. Go ahead, man. You can have – I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you pretty much touched on everything here. Um, it was an impressive win against the Buccaneers, 34-23, uh, covered minus four. Uh, lost to the Raiders outright. Obviously lost minus four on that line as well. Uh, so they're one and one against 
the, the spread. I think they look to involve Alvin Kamara a bit more. Last week he had nine targets, nine catches for 95 yards, and 13 carries, 75, 79 yards, two tutties. I think he's going to try to get involved in this uh, a little bit more. I don't know if the Packers really have the ability to, to stop it. They let Detroit running backs on, on 20 carries get 85 yards, and that's Adrian Peterson getting six yards a carry, along with Kerryon Johnson, a little bit of uh, DeAndre Swift. Um, so I, th- I just think Kamara gashes them, and I think they can at least hold this game close. I'm, I'm comfortable with minus three. I don't love it because I'm not yeah. 100% sure why they're favored other than, like, a bounce-back game. You know what I mean? Like, to me, these teams are about even, so I'll, t- I'll take the bounce-back minus three if that's what Vegas is going to give me. I'll take that. Yes, sir. Um, I, I do think this might get bet down a little bit. I think – Oh, yeah, uh, I think – Everyone's gonna be hopping on Green Bay. Yeah, I Listen, think, and I think, and I think if it goes back down to a pick, I'm gonna feel really good about getting. Yeah, seats. yeah. I, I think for me is like I, assuming that Michael Thomas isn't there, neither is Devontae Adams. Just assuming they're both out. Mm-hmm. You'll see what the Packers did last year, just relying on the run game, and like it was like Adams Jones, was out baby. for an extended period of time, if I'm not mistaken. And they're able to do that. You saw exactly last week what Josh Jacobs did to that Saints defense. He didn't punch into the end zone until late, but he was consistently gaining and gaining and gaining on him. So so my thing with that, so I have that in my notes too. I had 88 yards, but that's on 30 carries, 27 carries, right? I think they had like 100 yards on 30 carries total. And that was like on a Jalen Richard, like 25-yard run. The one that he got like a touchdown was like 20 yards or something like that. Um, So he's getting – So he's getting – you know the yards but it's not it's not exactly efficient i don't know um i mean aaron jones obviously better uh, better running back 18 carries last week 178 yards two tutties also added on four receptions 70 yards and a touchdown my man was out of his mind right um i don't know if the saints can s- stop that kind of production but I'll take Kamara over Aaron Jones in a in a shootout yeah. situation. It's I mean it's not even that that you I would like weigh the running backs together. It's more that I'm playing the defenses against each other. I think Green Bay has a bigger chance of stopping Kamara or at least slowing him down than the Saints defense does against Aaron Jones and even Jamal Williams because mm-hmm. I mean it's a two headed monster. Like New Orleans has their two headed monster too with Latavius Murray. Like he's no slouch back there either. I just think Green Bay is a lot more apt to stop that run. Than yeah, and they get. I mean, I mean, and they got torched by Derek Carr, right? Derek Carr yeah. had three touchdowns. Um, so it's it's definitely interesting. So you guys, so you, Sam, Tyler, you guys are both taking Packers. Take the Packers. Possibly. Yep. Saints. Good. Yeah, Nick All and right. I are on the Saints. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We're gonna tackle easy money right now. I'll start it off here. I. I could probably I, – I don't even know. Like, I have three games here. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Bucks minus six over the Denver Broncos. Um, Tampa Bay obviously lost to – Even even with Jeff, Jeff, Drisc- uh, Jeff Driscoll. Jeff, Jeff, you don't even know his name. You don't even I know just, his name. I'm illiterate. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I'm illiterate. What, what does that point have to do with me taking the Bucks minus six? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just saying, you know, he kind of popped off last week. Yeah, I know, but he's the backup to Drew Locke for a reason. And I would probably <laughs> – Yeah, but, this, I don't but know. the Steelers' defense is a lot better than Tampa Bay's defense. I don't care. It's – Okay. Flash in a pan, Driscoll, I'm, I don't know. All right. It's my easy right. money, not your easy money. Um, yeah, I'm just saying. That's fine. No, I mean, we saw last week the Bucks got their bounce back game, um, really figured it out. I mean – you, you look at a Broncos team, they're missing their quarterback. They're going to be heavily reliant on the run game, but they only have Melvin Gordon, which, I mean, I would take any day of the week better than having Devontae Freeman um, as a Giants fan. But, look, the Broncos haven't impressed me. I mean, they did play the Steelers tight, and the Steelers do have a good D, like you noted. But I, I just think this is a game the Bucks should win by more than a touchdown. Like, this is Tom Brady we're talking about with the weapons that he has, and this game should be a runaway. Awesome, I wouldn't Tom be shocked Brady. if they win this game by 20 points. What, am I coming back at you, or? You, know, you can do whatever you want. You can give your pick if you want. <laughs> oh, uh, is, is this going to be an easy money one? Yeah, it's easy, easy money. money. You're lock of the week, Nick. <sighs> I kind of like Tennessee minus two and a half. You know, last week, 
I have to say I was on the Vikings last week because I thought the Vikings were a lot better team than they really are. They stink. This is a uh, spite pick, Nick. This is, you might get burned double week because you're picking against I'm the Vikings. A, listen, I think I might get double burned this week, and honestly, that's okay. Um, and then I'm not going to bet on the Vikings ever again in my entire life and stay away from every single game they play. Um, I just look at this Tennessee Titans team who's just dominant on both sides of the ball. And, and my whole thing with the Vikings this year is I look just to – listen, they're, they're known for having good defense, keeping a good, consistent offense. Kirk Cousins, uh, we talked about it off air last week. Uh, we were having a little bit debate about how good Kirk Cousins is. Um, and I should an shut absolute, my mouth. He's an absolute zero. I'll swallow my words on that argument. Yeah, I I'm backtracking everything I said. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I wish I wish you guys could have heard it because it was three on one in favor that mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins is a decent mm-hmm. quarterback. Could we? Uh, could we just? Could I? Could I just hear Anthony? You were right on uh, on on Kirk Cousins at least for a one week sample. Okay, Anthony, yep. you were you right, were right you. for a one week sample. Oh, okay. Kills him to say it. It um, stuttered. <laughs> and because of Kirk Cousins, Tennessee minus two and a half. All right, who's up? Sam, hit me. All right, so I got a couple here, but one lock of the week, I got to go with the Atlanta Falcons minus three against the Bears. So, really? Something's, something's got to break right for Atlanta where their offense just scores like 95 See, points and their yeah, defense just doesn't give up 96. Yeah, like, that they, they've, their offense looks incredible <laughs> for two weeks, but they've, you know, they've gotten lit up on the other end by mm-hmm. Seattle and Dallas, two – of the top offense in the NFC. This week, they got the Bears. Trubisky's looked, you know, Bears. okay at times this year, but, like, he, he stinks. Uh, he's he's terrible quarterback. <laughs> Might be worse than Kirk Cousins. And I, I'm it's, it's another thing. I'm expecting a big bounce back from Atlanta this week. Mm-hmm. And I, I just – I don't see a way that the Bears start the year 3-0. and Okay, so – before we keep going, I do want to rebuttal a little bit here because I personally like Chicago here plus three. Um, I like Chicago strictly because the Falcons are looking at possibly not having Julio Jones next week. Um, they just they just got embarrassed on national television uh, against the Cowboys. They're the first team to ever score 39 points, have zero turnovers, and still lose the football game. Ever. Um, Winners, it's, it was like 449 and 0 or something. Well, now 449 and 1 or some, some ridiculous number like that. I mean, I, I just can't see. I, I have a hard time believing that the, the Falcons can hold any lead. Um, the Bears are pretty healthy, too. They're not missing any pieces on their offense, on their defense. Um, David Montgomery is near fully healthy. Their defense is pretty good with Brokon Smith, Khalil Mack, um, Kendall Fuller. Uh, in the secondary. So I could see – no, they have Kendall. I thought, I thought Kyle's on the, the Washington One of them football team. Kendall's in Washington. Kyle's in Chicago. Yep. Okay, so they have Some Fuller. Some jersey have, on right now, bro. I all right, they have, their, they have the Fuller in their <laughs> second. Anyway, um, Trubisky didn't look too bad week one against uh, Detroit, especially in the last – in the first uh, – Terrible defense. Quarter. Okay, but you see, you see the Falcons? Fair. Yeah, okay. So he would had a very good one quarter against against Detroit. <laughs> and and it won him the football game. And he, he was good in the only quarter he I had think, to be good in to win the football game. So I feel I like the, the Bears plus three here. That's it. Yeah, I, I like I I really like Atlanta and Detroit are kind of the same and like they have just very bad defenses, but I think Atlanta's offense is just that much better mm-hmm. than Detroit. Um and I, I expect they got embarrassed last week and I do not see them I see them coming out pissed off and coming for blood. I'm, I'm but, with you that I, I'm looking for a revenge game for the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I mean, they're going to score, you know, 40 something points. Um, and if so long as they don't give up 45 something points, you know, they, they should, should be never okay. Know, um, I mean, this is a team that's gone like seven and nine, like what, three of the last four years or something like that. And mm-hmm. Dan Quinn still holds on to his job. It feels like this happens Somehow. to them every single year where they just lose um, like a, a handful of like crappy games and then come back and win like four or five or something like that and look decent and Dan Quinn keeps his job. Um, I'm with you though, Sam. I think they, I think they, they get the, they get the war, uh, they get the dub there. All right. And uh, I guess I'll wrap up with my easy money. 
We got two two and O teams. I got Rams and Jesus. Bills. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, I want to hear this. I'm taking the Bills minus two and a half. Wow. Yeah, I'm taking the Bills wow. minus two and a half. I'm taking the Bills. Wow. Minus two and a half. Wow, both so, of these. I want to go. So, I want to. Okay, go ahead, because I want to make the case when you're done. I'm sorry. So, the Bills injury report today is lengthy. Okay. I don't anticipate it being that lengthy on uh, on Sunday when they play. Mm-hmm. But Trey White was limited with a shoulder. Uh, linebackers Tremaine Edmonds. Yeah, but yeah, hold on. Before you keep going, you know teams do that just to excuse. Yeah, no, I'm just doing reps. Okay, okay, okay. I'm done. All right, go. Keep going. Well, th- these these are guys that were limited, so it's all right. So Ed Oliver out. DNP. Dawson Knox. DNP. Cole Beasley. DNP. Zach Moss. DNP. Um, Bills this year one and one against the spread. They beat the Dolphins. They're two and zero on the year one and one against the spread. Beat the Dolphins week uh, week two or last week. Couldn't cover. Uh, beat the Jets. Covered minus six and a half. The Rams beat the Cowboys and the Eagles. They beat the Cowboys by three, and that was a pick em win. They beat the Eagles by, like, 17 points. But the Eagles stink, so it's irrelevant. Um, I don't think the Rams have shown me anything that spectacular to be um, to, to be two-and-a-half-point, like, dogs in this game. To me, that defense – is all or nothing, right? And they will get burnt by speed, right? They're in your face corners. Jalen Ramsey is going to press you down the line. And if he gets beat, so long. Who's going to beat him? John Ross and Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs is one of the best. John Brown, not John, John Ross. What did I say, John Ross? John Ross is also fast. It works, Good all right? <laughs> um, John Brown. Oh, uh, isn't there another Brown they had? Jaron? Jaron Brown? Yeah. He exists? Okay. Yep. Um. Listen, I'm taking the I'm, I'm taking the Bills here. Stephon Diggs has had a hot start to the season. Uh, last week, eight catches, 153 yards, and a touchdown. He's one of the best in the NFL at tracking down a deep ball. What does Josh Allen do? Well, throws a deep ball right over Jalen Ramsey's schnoggin. Oh, right? can we – wait, 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 wait. Okay, right. so so you're telling me the char- – yeah. uh, sorry, not the chart. The Rams played a ba- bad two teams, right? Yes. Okay. Who did the Bills play the first two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> that's irrelevant. Oh, oh, no, no, it's completely irrelevant. It's completely played, irrelevant. They played the Jets and the Dolphins. Okay. 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 They played the Jets and the Dolphins. Okay. You're talking that's about fine. two really bad football yeah, teams. Yeah, and I'm talking about a team the that's Rams in the played the Cowboys, last year. to be fair. The Rams played the Cowboys. The Cowboys just overcame a 39. Mm-hmm. Th- They're a pretty is, good team. What? Cowboys are a solid team. They're a good what? team. What? Mm-mm. I'm talking about a pl- I'm talking about a Bills team that was in the playoffs last year and was a tackle away from advancing. Okay, the and, and the Jaguars were a game away from winning, going to the Super Bowl, and yeah, and then they blew there. up their team. Yeah, they you know what the Bills did? Not blow up their team. In fact, they got better and signed Stephon Diggs or traded for Stephon Diggs. Anyways. I, I, I like the Bills here. I think the Bills are a legitimate team. I'm all on that bandwagon. I understand. I understand. If you take the Rams plus two and a half here, like I get it. If you don't buy the Bills hype, if you didn't buy it last year and you're not going to buy it this year, you might as well just never buy it, right? Um, I'm buying into it. I don't buy it for this game. I think this is going to be a very close game. You're looking at um, two Yeah, that's fine. It could be close as long as the Bills win by more than two and a half points, as long as they win by three or four or five or any, anywhere up there. Even I'm six. taking the points. I, I'm six. taking the points with the LA Rams here. Um, the Rams have that West Coast offense that I'm actually very surprised to see them play well this year. I thought they were going to regress, um, and they haven't. Uh, they have three capable running backs in the backfield with even an injured Cam Akers and an injured Malcolm Brown. Daryl Henderson was drafted to be that guy, what, two years ago, three years ago, behind Ty Gurley. Um, they just extended uh, Robert Woods. They just extended Cooper Cup. They just extended – well, they didn't just, but they have they have their core offensive pieces set, ready to go. Um, their defense, they still have arguably, actually not arguably, the best defensive player in the league in Aaron Donald, who can easily tear up that that Bills line. Um, they fine. stop the they stop the run game. You force jo- Josh Allen to throw the football. Yeah, now, what yes, do you do he, last now, year? Yes, four hundred and seventy yards yes, against the Miami Dolphins, bro. Yeah, against man. we just talked about how That's cheese fine. their defense is. That's you fine. just talked about how cheese their defense is. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so Josh Allen can throw the deep ball, yes. But he his accuracy isn't where it has to be to take that next step. Okay, he's he's if he gets those short game throws, sure, I'll believe it. They stop the run. They put the ball in Josh Allen's hands. I don't think he wins a football game. I think that Los Angeles Rams win plus two and a half. I even feel fine taking the under in this game. All right, moving on. <laughs> We're going to make the case. 
<laughs> I'm going to kick it off with the Arizona Cardinals minus five and a half against the Detroit Lions. Um, Detroit's coming in at 0 and 2. Arizona's coming in at 2 and 0. Um, last week, Detroit lost to Green Bay by 21. First week, they blew. Um, they didn't blow the game necessarily. Oh, they did blow the game against the Bears. And then DeAndre Swift dropped the ball in the end zone, um, which would have given them the lead with little to no time to go. The Cardinals, uh, 2-0, and like I mentioned. They beat a healthy Niners team week one. I mean, not healthy. They were missing a lot of wide receivers. But still, I mean, I feel like you didn't really expect the Cardinals Defense to win. They were dogs that game. Um, and then last week beat the Washington football team by uh, 15 points as seven-point favorites. Um, both games stayed under, but they've gone 2-0 and against the spread. I just feel like Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins are in a real rhythm right now. I have Hopkins in fantasy and – getting consistent 10 catch 15 target games. Um, he, he's a monster and they're getting in a rhythm. Kyler Murray beat a very fast Washington defense who got a lot of sacks in week one. Um, I just think the Lions are just still a lowly team. They are getting uh, Kenny Galladay, but uh, I, I don't, I'm not too high on the, the Lions Can at Kenny all. Galladay and I feel like a touchdown is fine. Or safety. Huh? Can Kenny Galladay play corner or safety? No, it's just why it I think matter. it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> like it's <laughs> – I think the line's too low, but I think it's reasonably set. Like, I just think this is a game you're going to have to jump on because you're five not going to really make the half, Cardinals. Right? What's that? Five and a half? It's five and a half. Yeah, you're not going to make the Cardinals, like, 10-point favorites against Detroit because you still have a young quarterback, albeit he's good. But it's going up against Matt, Matthew Stafford on a Lions team that's always competitive um, to some extent throughout the course of a season. Um, but this is, I don't think this is a game they can win. I think the uh, Cardinals win it pretty comfortably, so. I'm a little scared to make my case after the ridiculing I just got. Sorry, but, uh, I'm sorry. I'll take a back seat here. I've, oh, I, no, I, you won't because my... I'm taking the Jets I... plus 10 and a half at the yes, Colts. thank you! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I'm glad we're all on the same page here. We're going to make this go nice and smooth here. Uh, yeah! First of all, first of all, <laughs> I think the, uh, I think oh, the only – I think the only – thing we need to or the the first thing we need to talk about here is is the fact that 10 and a half is a fuck ton of points that's a lot that's, a lot. that's way too many points. points indy's not 12 or 11 points better than anybody no no um until they win by like 21 and everybody hates no. their lives for so while we're, while we're all on the same page here let me just i, I can run you through some notes and then I'll, I'll, I'll give the floor to you guys um so 2020 against the spread the jets are zero and two week one they lost to the bills 27 17 uh couldn't cover plus six and a half we talked about that um lost to the 49ers bad 31 13 uh it's a plus seven loss that they couldn't cover uh Colts yeah. won, won against the spread on the 13th against the Jaguars week one they lost 27 to 20 it was kind of everybody's what the hell is going on game um couldn't cover minus seven and a half uh and then they bounced back beat the Vikings 28 11 obviously um uh got the W there um some of the good for the Jets, uh, I have normally a solid run defense. Normally. 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 They got kind of gashed last week, but it's the 49ers and their zone run scheme kind of gashes everybody. So uh, I'll, leave it, I'll leave it at that. Um, the bad, uh, lots of injuries. I have 10 injuries on my, on my, uh, on my notes here. Um, they're not really all that relevant, except for well, all you the are, they, they, they have one relevant, I guess, injury and replacement is who's starting at running back. Um, well, Caleb, uh, Caleb Balazs was, uh, limited with a rib injury. Yeah, so but who's starting? Who's it's starting? Be Frank Gore. It's Frank Gore! Man, that guy, that guy is an absolute um, unit, dude. He's like a Nokia phone, never made to be broken. He's going to last forever. years old. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Um, and then I have some of the bad, lots of injuries got worked by a decimated 49ers team. Uh, Adam Gase, bad. Uh, and then some good for the Colts. They had three sacks, seven QB hits, three interceptions. Uh, and Jonathan Taylor and Naeem Hines are solid one-two punch. The bad, they allowed Minnesota four and a, uh, four and a half yards per carry. I don't think Frank Gore can run four and a half yards um, <laughs> without getting very far. So all you guys, I'm taking Jets plus ten and a half. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I've said my piece. Uh, Sam, I'm going to go real quick here. And yeah. I'm going to piggyback kind of off of Mano because – he picked the Jets, and I'm going to pick the Giants this week, baby. Giants plus four and a half at home against the decimated San Francisco 49ers team. First of all, this team loses arguably 
okay, they have no Bosa, they have no Solomon Thomas, they have no Richard Sherman. You look at the offensive side of the ball, they might not have Jimmy G. They're not going to have – Okay, they don't, they're not going to have Jimmy G. They're not going to have Mostert. They're not going to have Tevin Coleman. They have no wide receivers. Who is on that football team? Second of all, they're scared to play at MetLife. These boys don't want to play at MetLife. Nobody gets hurt at MetLife except them, apparently. Um, Giants, Daniel Jones, home. I love them. I'm going to hate my life because I pick. Not only do I spite the Vikings, but now I'm picking the Giants. It's going to be. I'm going to be tough next week. Book it. That's it. Love a little lunch money on the Giants money line too. Oh, the lunch Johns. <laughs> we should start a segment called Sam's Lunch Money, and it's just like yes. Like, what money line lunch. do I want to just <laughs> sprinkle? Just it's just sprinkle. <laughs> but that eleven points for the Jets that just screams back for a cover. Yeah, like re- honestly, it's I saw that and I was kind the of Jets like, come alive in garbage time. Yeah, I saw an article that. Um, Week three, 0 and two against the spread. Like teams that are 0 and two against the spread going into week three are like big time winners. Wow. Uh, I don't remember the record offhand. I should have wrote it down, but uh, that's one of the reasons I picked this. Uh, this I picked this Jets team. Sammy, Sammy. All right, wait, so- but wait. Before we go, I just want to talk. We talk. I talked about the Giants. I'm sorry. I just I just remember one thing. Okay. Yes, the Giants lost Saquon Barkley to the, for the season. But we can have we can also hold the discussion about how he got absolutely nothing done the first two games of the year. So what difference does it really make losing him? Devontae Freeman's also not that good. Um, not, I don't really like it, but I understand the signing. But Daniel Jones is the man, Jones. So, okay, sorry. Sam, what do you got? All right, uh, make the case. I got Washington plus seven against the Cleveland Browns. Okay. Cleveland, uh, uh, they make stink. Your case. They stink. Okay. So Cleveland okay. is not better than is not seven points better than anybody. And that, we said before, that Washington defense is quick, and they they will get after Baker Mayfield. And I mean, the second Baker gets any pressure, he's running running for his he runs for his life. You know, has no pocket presence, and I think that'll cause him some turnovers and. Yeah, he looked good last week against Bengals defense, which they stink. Washington's good good defense. You know, if, it's really all dependent on Dwayne Haskins can, you know, play good football. Not like he has to, like, light it up, but just don't lose the game or don't throw the game away <laughs> completely. It'd be nice if he won the football game, yeah. I like nice Washington word. plus seven, and part of me wants to do a little bit of money line, but I that's probably stupid, but – a little bit just a little bit maybe just a little bit just a little sprinkle now, but that i mean i i do I, I there's no way i can't bet on cleveland i can't yeah, i no. did it i did it before and it didn't work for me so Joey I'm with burrow with the sneaky backdoor cover mm-hmm. all right final segment of the night we have of the day oh, of the show awesome. depending on when you listen to it you can listen to it whenever um youtube spotify apple podcast quick plug um Monday Night Football, we have an 8-15 kickoff in Baltimore. The visiting Chiefs take on the Ravens. The Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs, are three-and-a-half-point underdogs um, in Baltimore. Total set at 54. Oh, Look, let me I, get my I'm wallet. Let me get my, I'm, I'm going to get my wallet. I'm getting my wallet out real quick. Hold on, because here, take all of my money, dude. Give me the Chiefs plus three-and-a-half here. Why would you not take the Super Bowl champions – you just did you not just see what Patrick Mahomes did last week against the Chargers? He is by far the best quarterback in the NFL, the most talented, the most athletic. Say whatever you want about him, but give him three and a half points against. I, I'll take three and a half points for Patrick Mahomes against any team in the league, eight days a week, twice on Sundays. That's it. That's it. Uh, that was going to be my reasoning. I mean, I look, it's Super Bowl champions, Patrick Mahomes underdogs i don't know how many times that's happened in the past i don't think many um i just uh, this is going to be a really close game like there's no reason to harp on it both teams are pretty healthy um for the most part nobody's missing anybody major there's no major keys it's going to be very action-packed and yes i know every game has action in it nick but (laughs) look it's three and a half points with the dogs i mean the chiefs are good the chiefs are a good team 
The Ravens are pretty good too, though. It's a, the it's the truth. <laughs> the Ravens I are mean, pretty good. The Ravens, the Ravens are have been it, dominant. Through two weeks. This is like an unwritten rule of betting is like you're getting three and a half points with the Super Bowl champions. And Who didn't really lose anybody on either side of the, the, the ball. Yeah, and they added Clyde Edwards Hilaire. It's another dimension to that offense. So regardless, look, I'm not saying the Ravens are a bad football team because they're not by any stretch of the imagination. But I am willing to die on the hill that I made the correct play in the Super Bowl champions who are a better team than they were last year when they won the Super Bowl. And you're giving me points for it. Sam, I, look, the money line is what screams out to me on this one. Plus 160 on the Chiefs. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's, stick, I love stick, the value stick, there. Stick, get out a piece of paper because I'm going to give you my credit card number. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Jesus. Mano's got that look on his face like he's going Ravens here, and I don't know how I feel. You know, I I sat on this game. I sat on this game while I was typing out my notes, right? I'd I'd try not to make a pick until I have all my notes, like, compiled, and I have everything together, and I can look at everything, like, um, from as, like, macro as possible, as from, like, far out as possible. Um, I like Chiefs plus three here. For much of this – like, I don't like making picks because it's like, oh, this team won the Super Bowl and here they are again. But it's like, it's the Chiefs, and this is probably the best team that we've seen in maybe since that – maybe since that Patriots team that lost in the Super Bowl for the Giants, right? The one that almost – Giants! Um, yeah, the one that almost went 19-0. I think that – I think this Chiefs team could probably beat that Patriots team. Um, I, I'm taking Chiefs plus three here. I am a little scared that they didn't cover last week. It was a 23-20 win. Yeah, but they're um, they're bound at they're the bound. Chargers. Yeah, something's got to give. They're bound to do something. I mean, but the difference this week is that they had to win by seven last week, and this week they're getting three. Yeah, it's a and tie I, game going I, to the I last think, possession. You, know, you just got to keep them out of the end zone. I think if they were prepared for um, Tyrod Taylor, then they would probably if they, if they were prepared for Justin Herbert, um, then they probably would have ran him out of the building. But they were last second kind of jumped by the fact that Justin Herbert was going to be the starter. That uh, Tyrod Taylor got a needle in the lung. Um, and the, and they're and they're pretty play. much playing the same exact Baltimore Ravens team they played last year. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, the, I mean, well, that they saw last year, and what you're you're planning the same way you planned last year, except maybe yeah. you add, you add J.K. Dobbins in the mix. So, maybe you add a little bit of a impre- improved game out of Marquise Brown, but that's it. So let me give the other side of the argument here for Ravens minus three because I was close, I was close, but the the deciding factor was going to be the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, right? The Chiefs O line, kind of shitty, and by kind of I mean shitty to the tune of one sack allowed. That's fine. Seven QB hits. Uh, but Mahomes scrambled for 54 yards. Um, they this also is the Ravens allow... D line with Calais Campbell now. So exactly, exactly. 15 carries for 60 yards for uh, for Kansas City running backs. That's also not good. Chiefs def- uh, run defense allowed 183 yards um, last week. Um, and the Ravens had four sacks, 13 QB hits. So I. I What's it? Can I ask the over under for this game? Fifty four. I think it's fifty three and a half. Yeah. No, dude, I think that's deceiving. I would take the under here too. I think it's played up high just because these two offenses. It's going to be a long, big twenty eighteen Rams Chiefs vibes. Sam, that let me hear. Electric. Sam, let me hear your contrarian because I know you're about to give me fucking some spew some garbage right yeah, this here. This sounds a lot like last week when I was ridiculed for picking the Chargers and the Raiders. Well, and guess how those games turned out. I was wrong in both of them. <laughs> I am hammering the Ravens minus three. Because that – I'm a little con- – not I don't know about concerned is the right word because it is early in the season with that Chiefs defense. And I just think the Ravens are going to be able to run all over them. And if they do decide, oh, it's second box a little bit. Lamar is still a very capable passer, elite passer at that – and I do. I actually like the over in this game as well. I think it's gonna be a lot of points. But the, the Ravens' defense has has looked very good this year so far. But you know, obviously, KC has the best offense in the NFL. Maybe maybe hammers not the right word for the Ravens, but I do like that Ravens minus three over fifty four. 
Same. And I'm what was that? One of these guys? No, not not quite that. But no, like, you, no. The, spr- more, the sprinkles got to be uh, a nice honor money it's line. A nice dog. juicy money line, but um. I don't know why I'm just I'm thinking about that 2018 money money football game, um, Chiefs Rams in uh, Mexico City when it was about like 52, 54, 51 something like that. I'm feeling something like that, not as high scoring, but I see a lot of points in this game. The two ran two pass MVPs I think gonna go shot for shot. I mean that'd be exciting. I mean as a fan I feel like that's all you could really ask for, but I don't know. That would be it'd be electric. I just don't I, like I don't like that Chiefs defense right now. I definitely wouldn't take the under. I mean, I think that's a safe play on the over. Like it's if you're taking the under on two of the most explosive offensive players in the game, that's crazy. Um, I'm stupid. I'm crazy, dude. What do you want me to tell you? I'm crazy. What do you want me to tell you? I'm trying to hold it the in. The thing but I'm is, crazy. that's not even the highest total of the week. It's not even the highest total of the week. You have the highest uh, total. Seattle, it's, it's Seattle and, and, yeah. Is it the Seattle and Cowboys? I think yeah. that's going to go under, too. I think yeah, that, that, that one's major. That really I major. like the under, but even the Lions I don't think I'm going to touch that. Under. I don't know. I like Seattle that game, too. That's now, bef- before we close, I want to talk because we, we have um, – what's what's the line? Because I think it's five and a half. The Bengals at the Philadelphia Eagles. I love the Bengals in that game, dude. The Eagles are a dumpster fire. The Eagles are an absolute dumpster fire. They're not what they're supposed to be. They don't have Alshon. Jalen Rager's going on the IR. Miles Sanders banged up, who I don't even think is that good in the first place. Carson Wentz looks like garbage. Their defense is non-existent. You're looking at a pretty confident Bengals team with a, a, a Joe Burrow who said last week he's never been 0-2 before in his entire life. He hates losing, blah, blah, blah. That guy's fired up. Their offense is pretty decent. Their defense is okay, but I think Joe Burrow can lead him to a, a little upset here. So I like the five and a half, and I I think there's a little sprinkle on this game. This sprinkle is going to be my on the money line, baby. This is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on this one. I think there's some money to be made segment? on underdogs this week. I mean, a so. segment here, little 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 That's sprinkle. It. Yeah, I mean, we lunch could lunch we segment. can make that a daily thing. Let's do it. Let's add it. Let's add a lunch. We'll money. call it Sammy's sprinkles and. Uh, <laughs> Sam will kick us off, and that's it. All, All right. right. Hey. So that wraps up this week's episode. Um, week three coming at you tonight with my Miami and the Jacksonville Jaguars um, in Jacksonville. You can follow us on Twitter at Caps on Sports, on Instagram, Caps on Dot Sports, our website, Caps on Sports.com. If you're watching caps on, on YouTube, Caps on, Caps on, Caps on. Slap that caps thumbs on. up button, the like button, uh, the subscribe button, comment, talk to us, let us know what you want. Send us your picks. Curious about that. Do um, it, do it, do it. Yeah, your, your connect with us picks, and not, not picks of yourself. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I mean, you can send. Hey, us it depends. You know. It depends. If, you if you're, I'll take some pictures of you, Mano. I no. <laughs> Anyways, that wraps up this episode. My name is Tyler Bloomstick, joined by Anthony Mano, Sam Meehan, and Nick Tobias. Yay, and not Nicholas. We'll see you next week. <laughs>